Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today in this uh, session. I'm going to be talking about health system strengthening using surveillance in Sierra Leone. So our story takes place in Toncolili district, population of around 430,000 people, area around 7,000 kilometers squares. It's divided in 11 sheepdoms, and it has around 1,000 villages, most of them in a rural and hard to reach area. MSF started the maternal and child health program here in January 2016 in the locations in, in the map. Why are we there? Uh, Ebola affected badly this district. We had an Ebola <coughs> management center, which closed in May 2015. In October 2015, we started supporting surveillance activities. And after we had closed the, the EMC, we had the resurgence in January 2016. The Ebola outbreak and this last flare-up uh, revealed, uh, revealed some important gaps in the surveillance system. Before I explain to you what we actually did in, in surveillance in Toncolili, I will briefly explain, uh, explain what are the, the main traditional approaches of MSF when working in surveillance. First, we have the reporting of health events from our health facilities. Then we have the active surveillance outside of the MSF area. That's probably what you were talking about. We call other facilities and try to get their, their data. We don't normally work with those facilities. And then we have the household level surveillance done by community health workers. So now talking about Toncolili surveillance. In Sierra Leone, the Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response System, IDSR, was adapted by MOH and WHO after the Ebola outbreak. This is a weekly paper-based uh, system reporting of 27 notifiable diseases and deaths. To the right, we can see in this uh, flow chart how the communication works, the information flows. <coughs> we have the health facilities, 103 peripheral health units, PHUs, and three hospitals, which is a lot. And then these uh, health facilities send the reports to the district uh, surveillance office. And the district surveillance officers send the reports to a national level. The arrows go both ways there because the district surveillance officers can also call the health facilities that have failed to report on time. As we said before, we identify some gaps in this system such as the lack of routine surveillance analysis and reporting. Uh, we had a large and mapped uh, remote area under surveillance with the challenges in terms of communication and access. Performance indicators such as timeliness and completeness were very poor. And then the fact that the system was uh, Ebola focused, uh, it, which made sense at the time, but now it's a bit of a challenge because some, disease, some other diseases don't receive enough attention. For all these reasons, we decided to strengthen the public health surveillance in this large network of uh, health facilities to improve the detection and response to epidemics and deaths beyond the MSF area of intervention. Uh, what did we do to help uh, the surveillance system? Uh, we took a multifaceted uh, approach to strengthen triage and case definition, quality of reporting, and analysis of the reported data. How did we do this? We deployed an MSF epidemiologist, an expat, and we hired and trained an MSF national staff epidemiology assistant. We decided to work closely and in continuous collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Sanitation and WHO. And we organized the IDSR trainings and supported the PHU supervision visits. In these visits, we would use a WHO developed checklist based in a mobile data collection system. Uh, and for more, we developed an open source uh, dashboard software tool to identify poor performing PHUs and hospitals in terms of completeness and data quality and to help us detect outbreaks and unusual trends. Apart from helping them in reporting analysis, etc., we decided to also strengthen the response and activity planning capacity. We did an exhaustive mapping with field validation from MOH. We joined case investigation of uh, epidemic prone disease, supported vaccination campaigns, uh, helped with reviewing malaria and maternal deaths data, and helped the district surveillance officers when preparing the weekly surveillance meetings and the epi bulletins. 
This is an example of uh, the dashboard. You can see the last version outside, and it can give far details, but you can uh, see how easy it is to visualize disease trends and the geographic distribution of the cases. This is the map uh, that we did. Uh, first, we mapped the health structure in red crosses. Then we mapped the villages, the gray dots, and then we matched those villages to their corresponding uh, health structure to define the catchment area of each PHU. So what did we achieve? What, are our, what were our results? We managed to organize four IDSR trainings and uh, to support more than 130 PHU visits. In this picture, we can see an example of the of one of the trainings. And in this picture, the epidemiology assistant is uh, checking the registration uh, consultant's uh, books. Uh, in these uh, PHU visits, we will also use the, the dashboard to feed back to the PHUs about their performance in terms of data quality, et cetera. One of the most important achievements of our intervention was the improvement in the reporting completeness. In these figures, we can see how the completeness went from <coughs> around 50% of health facilities reporting in Epic Week 6, 2016, to 100 of them reporting in Epic Week 2017. In this slide, we can see how we managed to reduce the misclassification of diarrhea, severe dehydration, and severe pneumonia after the efforts and continuous training on the use of the correct case definition. Before this, most of the PHUs were reporting all diarrheas as diarrhea severe dehydration and all respiratory presentations as severe pneumonia. Uh, we managed to support 63 case investigations, most of them missiles, and that is because uh, at the beginning of 2016, Sierra Leone had an outbreak of missiles. And we supported the subsequent um, vaccination campaign for measles and other vaccinations for polio. In this picture, we can see the district uh, surveillance officer in a case investigation processing a sample. We managed to identify priority areas uh, for a community-based malaria program using the dashboard to analyze the malaria burden and the geodistribution of cases. We helped the MOH when reviewing and analyzing the maternal death data. And by doing this, we reinforced maternal death surveillance, improved documentation of deaths, and uh, identify areas that needed attention, such as the timeliness of maternal referrals. We faced some important challenges. For example, the mapping, the mapping data was of poor quality and mainly related to Ebola. And the lack of local resources, MOH didn't really have the capacity to allocate any extra resources, human or logistical, to the district surveillance office. Some communication issues at the beginning with WHO and MOH, but now it's working very smoothly. And the fact that uh, MOH is not using the dashboard independently yet, despite our efforts to, to train them, and they still need us around to, to help them. And the fact that there is a new national data health system in place now, which is very good, but some of the, the features are not working yet, such as mapping, so they still need our dashboard to do that and our support, so this is a bit of a duplication of systems. So, in conclusion, we realized that surveillance is a powerful public health tool to strengthen clinical skills. Uh, for example, by uh, reinforcing case definition, we reinforced uh, triage and correct diagnosis. Uh, the national AP assistant was key to build relationships, uh, acceptance, and to ensure the continuity even when the expat is, is not there. Uh, the dashboard supported data quality training, and more importantly, the real-time analysis, uh, alerts, outbreak detection, and intervention planning. The engagement with MOH and WHO was crucial. Working closely and in continuous collaboration with them was fundamental for this approach. And finally, and more importantly, to, to our knowledge, this is a novel approach for MSF with limited human and technological resources. We uh, managed to support a large network of rural health facilities in their ability to improve their ability to report and respond to epidemics outside of the MSF uh, area of intervention. And finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, the rest of colleagues who participated in this project, and especially the PHU staff and the people of Tancolili.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? We have one at the back there. So the community part of the surveillance network, could you explain that a bit more, how that works? Because we know that often health facilities have access problems, so any surveillance system only based on health facilities might be missing out or, or detecting late any outbreaks. Could you explain a bit more about the community part? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the items that were uh, checked in, during those visits, that checklist developed by WHO that we were using to supervise the, the PHUs, includes the routine communication with, with community health workers from all the uh, small villages that that has health facility is covering. So when we were going to these uh, facilities, we were also checking that they were actually in communication with them and they were also performing their outreach activities and their active uh, case uh, active case search in communities. So yeah, at, at times it was a challenge and they were not always able to perform all the activities, but that was one of the points that we were trying to improve. One question there, can you, yep. Uh, Hi, Claire from MSF. Um, just given the presentation before you, can you see a place for uh, using SMS in this kind of situation as well? Because uh, having worked in Sierra Leone, I know that one of the issues is the access and getting data. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And actually, we might talk to Ziad after this uh, <laughs> presentation. It's a very, yeah, it's a very interesting system. In fact, what, uh, as part of the new system that the, the MOH is, is putting in place, there is a plan to use the, some type of mobile data collection at the PHU level. But I think this is a simpler way rather than having a, a tablet in each health center, having an SMS might be a much better idea given the context. Yeah. 